Hi, ONUC fam. It's Kayla here. And this week was a week that life got in the way, as it sometimes does. And so instead of leaving you guys without an episode, we decided to reach back into the vault and take out another USBS WTF news. This isn't a super long episode for this week, but it is a little bit of humor to get your week started. So enjoy this episode for this week. And while you're at it, we would greatly appreciate it if you head on over to Apple Podcast and give us a five-star review. It helps others find our podcast and you can tell them exactly why you love Leah and I so much and how we're a wonderful delight. Um, that's totally optional, but you know, we're always here to give you suggestions if you would like. So we will see you guys next week and we hope you enjoy. Welcome to USBS. This is not your regular ONUC episode. Nope, Absolutely nope, not. Nope. This is the Patreon feed whoop, where whoop. we get to let a little loose. A little bit. Uh, and just talk about some interesting things that uh, we like. Could be a person. Place. Event. Thing. News story. Oh. And back by popular demand. <gasps> this is volume two. <gasps> Of USBS WTF News. <laughs> we love it. Yes. We love to see it. We love to hear it. We have five. <gasps> Cinco. To go through today. All right. Let's head to Louisiana. <gasps> Let's you know, go. If it's not Florida, it's got to be Louisiana. Absolutely. Baxter, a Joey at a Baton Rouge enclosure, escaped with the help of a parrot named Thor, <laughs> who learned to open his door, his owners told WBRZ-TV. Thor is one of a number of birds in the owner's nonprofit Bird Recovery International program. The nonprofit's ultimate goal, according to its website, is to help wild parrot species and improve ways to release them into the wild. The Joey's stint out in the open surprised Brayden and Ethan Nelson as they were driving down the road. Brayden said, there's a kangaroo <laughs> on the side of the road. And I was like, what are you talking about? I turn around and sure enough, there was a kangaroo, Ethan Nelson told WBRZ TV. As a result of the escape, the kangaroo's owner, who previously owned a zoo, now will have to give up Baxter due to a local law, according to WBRZ-TV. The owners told the news station that they had hoped to continue to house Baxter and aim to get a permit for him. Title of this news story is, Kangaroo Escapes Captivity Thanks to the Help of Another Animal. The kangaroos Louisiana owners could reportedly face charges if they do not give up the marsupial or obtain proper licensure. Okay, that is even funnier because Michael and I were headed home one night a few years ago mm -hmm. and an animal crossed the road. Oh, God. <laughs> It was a possum, and I don't know what was wrong with him. He does not generally imbibe. He had not been imbibing. He goes, that was a kangaroo. Oh, God. That was not the right animal. He's listening to this, and I'm embarrassed, honestly. Well, so when you said that, if you're oh in gosh. kangaroo, if you're in Louisiana, kangaroo could, um, could, could really be, could really be there for you. You never know. That's why I laugh so hard. You never know. It could really happen. <laughs> We're going to head over oh, to honey. Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. <gasps> in a, a kangaroo. In a, hmm, tragically delicious story. Oh, we dear. will say. 
two people were rescued after they somehow fell into a partially filled <gasps> chocolate tank while doing maintenance work at a candy factory in oh, Pennsylvania. The incident was at the Mars Wrigley plant in Elizabethtown, and it occurred shortly before 2 p.m. on Thursday. The two people work for an outside contracting firm, officials say, and it's not clear how they fell into the tank. Emergency responders were able to free the pair by cutting a hole in the bottom of the tank, the officials say. It wasn't clear if either person was injured, but they were taken to hospitals to be evaluated. Their names and further details on their conditions were not disclosed. The Federal Occupational Safety and Health Administration is investigating the incident. An OSHA official declined comment on matters citing the ongoing investigation. The title, Pair Rescued from Chocolate Tank at Mars Wrigley Plant in Pennsylvania. Augustus, my dear, save some for later. I mean, <laughs> that's the only way that I can imagine this occurred. <laughs> like, really? I. <sighs> Augustus, chocolate flavored goo. I don't know. How else? Two of you fell in there. Okay, one, that was an accident. I mean, two. Come on, it tasted. Come on. Come on down. Two. Come on down. It, it is so tasty down here. Come on. They will get us out. Two of you. Come, Somebody come saw that movie one too many times <laughs> and was like, this is our chance. <laughs> this is it. Augustus made you a sip some for later. This <laughs> is my chance <laughs> to. This is why I was born. I'm going to swim. And it's always like when you were younger and you would always say like, it would be really cool to have like a pool of jello. Mm. And they really took that to a whole nother level. Yeah, I, not a pool of jello. No. Chocolate pudding. Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if I'd like the bubbles. I mean, it could be. I'm not going to shame somebody for what mm. they may or may not like in this think life. Of that Friends episode when when Chandler gets baths, you know, Monica yeah. draws him a bath. He's like, ooh, it's effervescing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it, it might. I, I don't know. know. No, no. Could be pretty nice. I would imagine if it were jello that you would just kind of on It'd top of it. Sticky too. That's true. I don't I don't prefer the stickiness Mm-mm. of it. Mm-mm. Chocolate though. I mean it's worth it's worth a try. I think that's what these people were up to. It's what I'm But they had to cut a hole in it. <laughs> I mean they probably regretted the chocolate out. They probably regretted their choice. So they're like, mm, we've made a terrible mistake. We did not calculate this properly. Mistakes were made. We did not calculate this. So. But it was delicious. From Louisiana, we're going to head over to another. Wait, we were in Pennsylvania. I know, but we went from (gasps) Louisiana. Pennsylvania doesn't count. Oh. The two main ones. In fact, got to go to Florida. Oh. Louisiana, Florida, same place. Gotcha. Um, Hey, y'all watch this. This is a, uh, (laughs) this is an interesting one. A Florida man who was looking for a security job at Walt Disney World has been accused of stealing a character statue from the park in May. (gasps) David Emerson Proudfoot was arrested and is facing third-degree grand theft charges and obstruction by false information after he allegedly donned a Disney name tag and attempted to steal a Star Wars (gasps) R2-D2 statue worth up to $10,000. A confused Proudfoot was allegedly spotted pushing a cart while leaving the Swan and Dolphin Hotel, according to a news outlet. An affidavit said he identified himself with the name of someone who didn't work for Walt Disney World and eventually said he was moving the statue and a game machine on the property. The man said he applied for a Disney World security job, the affidavit said, and wanted to move the items to point out security lapses in hopes of getting a better paying position. (laughs) He allegedly told police it wasn't his goal to take the items from Disney World, although a search warrant at his home revealed 
thousands of dollars worth of items from the theme park. Uh oh. Title is Florida Man Pretended to Be Disney World Staffer to Steal a Famous Character. And in the sub headline, the man wore a Disney name tag and wanted to show weaknesses in the theme park security. <laughs> oh. This happened on June 30th. <laughs> I think he got a little greedy. You know, like, oh, I can get this thing. So let's see if I can get this thing. Let's see if I can get this thing. You know what I'm saying? Like they found thousands of dollars worth. You know, like he was thousands. Let's, let's see. If, of okay, dollars. I can get this. Let's see if I can get a little bigger. Mm-hmm. Let's see if, you know what I mean? It was a game for him. Mm-hmm. I would like to know if they could find a job application for him. Uh huh. Yeah. And when you said statue, you know, for the 50th anniversary statue. Yeah. Well, you know, they did gold statues, Mm -hmm. like they did 50 gold statues around the three parks or the whatever, the parks in, um, Mm -hmm. in Florida. They did, you know, four parks. Yeah. Four. That's why I said whatever. But they did the gold statues and you were, you know, you Mm -hmm. could find all 50 of them. So I was like, oh my gosh. Was he stealing, trying to steal the gold statues? Said it was $10,000 and he was rolling it on a cart. Yeah, but they, they, the statues. So it must have been them, something different. Yeah, because the, the statues, most of them weren't that big. Like you wouldn't need a cart for it. Well, well I don't know. This is. <laughs> wow. The audacity. The audacity. The last, wow. The last one I'm saving for last okay. for a reason. Okay. It, uh, you'll appreciate it. <laughs> Our next to last article. A couple in Tennessee was recently stunned to wake up and find a big, sweet, cuddly dog curled up next to them in bed. Jimmy Johnson rolled over and asked his wife, Julie, whose dog is this? Oh, my. The Johnsons have three large hounds who usually share their king size bed with them, but this time, a beige mystery dog was splayed across their mattress. <laughs> Once they realized the dog was no threat, the couple snapped photos and posted them on their Facebook to find her owners. This is the weirdest post I've ever had to make, Julie Johnson wrote. Is this your dog? <laughs> According to a pup date posted by yeah. Julie, the dog, whose name is Nala, slipped away from her owners while on a walk just ahead of a thunderstorm. Apparently, Nala squeezed through a loose door at the Johnsons' home to find somewhere safe and warm to wait it out. The Johnsons' dogs didn't even raise a fuss when she hopped in to their bed. Wow. Nala was eventually reunited with her parents and became a media superstar. However, her owners are a tad embarrassed by their dog's lack of boundaries. Our overly friendly pup, Nala, has hit an all-time record for ignoring personal space (laughs) and yet added another trick to her long list of Houdini acts. Chris Hawkins, one of Nala's owners, wrote on Facebook, Shame on Nala for somehow breaking into a stranger's home and invading their personal space, Hawkins added. Thankfully, the couple thought it was hilarious and they aren't even mad about it. Topic is, Tennessee couple finds stray dog cuddled up next to them in bed. Wow. I mean, I have to say, I'm literally proud of their dogs. Not even a joke. And just showed <laughs> Leah a photo. She is in between their pillows. Like, she has no shame. None. She's like, this, this is, yeah, look, that's the couple, <laughs> literally beside them in bed. She just got in the house and she went, mm, this is a nice spot. I'm going to go here. With Goldilocks. I mean, oh, first yeah. of all, her name's Nala. Precious. Oh, uh, yeah. Second, this dog was like, one, I am not a peasant. I will not be sleeping outside. A thunderstorm is a brewing. I mm. smell it. I am a southern dog. I know how to smell a thunderstorm. Correct. And I know it is coming. I am getting out of this. And for not a single one of their hound dogs, hound uh, dogs, no. to not even make a peep. They just looked up and they were like, all right, this is how things go. I mean, I was going to say, my dogs that have been like, whoa, 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 whoa. We sleep in this bed. I don't know what you are thinking i don't even know if fletcher would do anything oh gosh oh no look if it were if it were smaller than fletcher maybe bigger than him 
he'd be like, eh, you know, this is your bed too. There's plenty of room. Oh, <laughs> my little runts, they don't care what size you are. That is so Sheldon. Funny. Sheldon is the watchdog. And look, we are we are babysitting three Absolutely dogs not. right now. Right now I have six dogs that at is my house. So many dogs. We yes, yes, that is so many dogs. Um we love them though, and they are good dogs. And they're dogs that we love. Um and so many dogs. But I was trying to take a nap because my head was hurting. And I was trying to take a nap, and all the dogs were inside. And my Sheldon, who is the watchdog, he's the bougie dog, but he is the watchdog. And there's one big dog that we were that we were watching, and he dared to make a sound. And let me tell you, if he made a sound, Sheldon would <laughs> Sheldon would not allow Nala to come in his house number one without <laughs> kicking up a fuss. Try to come jump up in the bed with his mama? Are you kidding me? He'd be like, I'm, I'm sorry, son. You might be able to eat me, but we gonna go first. But we'll try. Yeah. It ain't gonna be without a fight. I... We gonna sound the alarm. Mm. And he might die, but he would try to protect his mama. I mean... That's hilarious. I mean, I don't know. I'm I disappointed th- in their dogs. Yeah. I'm disappointed in their dogs. I disappointed for hound dogs. Disappointed. That is what kind of hound dogs do they have in Tennessee? It's kind of. I mean, isn't there like there's legitimately a Tennessee hound dog? Like, isn't that one of a Tennessee bird dog? I mean, isn't that literally like a a thing? Because mm. they're the uh, the volunteers. They have a dog as their um, as one of their the mascots. Coon dog. Yeah, mm-hmm. the coon dog. Wow. We'll just um, leave it at that because we don't want to get political. So, or our, football, whatever. Our last two articles um, have a theme, mm. I will say. Uh, one of them, it is, um, let's put it this way. Both of these, if you're listening with children, listen at your own discretion. <laughs> We're going to have more reptiles. Um, no, mm. but could we go in the same vein? <laughs> you could say that. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the first story is actually not a U.S. story. However, it, it, has, a, it has a special place in your heart. Oh, dear. So, Obviously. It's a sloth. Better. <gasps> we could not skip over it. Okay, I'm ready. I don't know if you are. Oh, no. I put my drink down. Close up the bottle. So I will say. It's just Mountain Dew, guys. It is not, uh, again, not from the U.S. per se. So let's just go into it. Again, if you are listening with children, listen at your own discretion. For the rest of the episode, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> An ecology professor has just come up with a theory about the Loch Ness Monster that is sure to stimulate controversy. Oh, no. Michael Sweet, who is a professor of molecular ecology at the University of Derby, recently suggested on Twitter that Nessie isn't a monster at all. No, she's not a monster. But just a whale penis. Sweet said that many sea explorers report story. <laughs> Can't. Aliens. <laughs> Sweet said that many sea monster stories reported by explorers were inspired by what he called tentacled and alien esque appendages emerging from the water. But while many of the observers may have believed the appendages breaking the ocean surface might be part of something more sinister lurking beneath the circuit surface, easy for you okay, to say. Sweet said that in many cases, <clears throat> it was just whale dicks. He is not sweet. I do not like him. Sadly, <laughs> sadly. Nessie was unavailable to comment on the whale penis hypothesis. Because he offended her. But to be fair, it's just the latest theory to pop up about the probably mythical Scottish creature. 
Back in 2019, researchers suspected the creature was really just a giant eel, while one man claimed it was just a giant catfish. Catfish? The title of this is Ecology Professor Theorizes Loch Ness Monster May Just Be Whale Penis. And this the subline oh. is this theory is arousing or interesting. <laughs> what a cuckod scheme. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, okay. mean, <laughs> what a cock and bull story. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no. Look, we had a discussion that Krakens are real. And Nessie look, is real. Nessie is real. We know this. I she I cannot with the idea. <laughs> I am appalled that a whale is under the surface just back swimming. Across the lock. I'm so sorry, <laughs> dude. No, oh, oh, well, just trolling all of Scotland. <laughs> Y'all want to take a peek? Here you go. No, no, Nessie. Which, honestly, no. If you're going off of science, cold air should do the opposite. I'm there just saying. Go. So, what is Sir, the excuse I take here? umbrage to your cockamamie story i cannot i do not i do no no <laughs> sir you are not sweet i do not enjoy your theory no she is real and you are stupid <clears throat> well i told you there was a i said the s word i told you there was a theme oh dear to our last two stories and there is. Oh, dear. Another cuckold scheme. Close. <laughs> so, uh, we are going to make it on to this last, this last go around. <clears throat> See how far I can make it through this. Oh, dear. Without cracking? Mm-hmm. That's one way to put it. Oh, no. <clears throat> Doctors had to operate on a man... Ooh. Doctors had to operate after a man went to A and E while whistling genitals due to a rare condition called pneumonia scrotum. Oh, the unusual no. ailment was due to an excess of air building up in his body, which was escaping via an open wound in his testicles. Oh, an no. examination found that both the elderly man's lungs had collapsed and he had a lot of air circulating within his chest, which is likely to have been what caused his complaint. <laughs> Medics described what happened in the American Medical Journal of Case Reports, saying they believed it to be the first case of its kind. There have been rare incidences of air building up in the scrotum before, but never involving whistling. <laughs> this happened because the man had undergone surgery in the area several months previously, and the wound remained where air could escape. The man, 72, spent three days in the hospital where doctors steadily released the air trapped inside his body. They treated his collapsed lungs, and he was also given antibiotics and urology procedures for his scrotal wound. In the report, doctors said the man adamantly denied injecting any air into his scrotum, which might have caused the whistling. This meant it was not excess air coming from the scrotum that had caused his lungs to collapse, but likely the other way around. <laughs> and the fact that air was able to escape via this means may even have helped him, though doctors say it could not be known for sure. The paper concluded, quote, our case of pneumonia scrotum, <laughs> a.k.a. scotal whistling from suspected spontaneous bilateral pneumonia thoraxes or collapsed lungs was unusual. Our patient had an open scrotal rune from a recent scrotal procedure which allowed the air to escape from his abdominal compartment and resulted in his concern of scrotal whistling. Whether the air escaped <laughs> whether the air escaped attuinated the patient's presentation and led to a more favorable outcome will never be known nonetheless he was successfully treated with multiple chest tubes subcutaneous air drains and supportive care title of this article 
man's genitals started whistling when lungs collapsed and air escaped through his scrotum. There are photos. <gasps> well, no. I'll say CT scans. They're not photos <laughs> per se. All I can say is I've heard of whistling Dixie. <laughs> Bless so you see where heart. the surgery was Bless down there. Heart. Those arrows are where his lungs should be. Oh, poor guy. So <laughs> hold on now, Martha. You mean to tell a, me we got a proper? <laughs> <laughs> At what point <laughs> did he <laughs> notice? The whistling. Like, what? <laughs> Could he play a tune? What? Could he change the pitch? And how, love, how did he change I the pitch? I love how their first... I love how one of their first questions was, clearly, he injected <laughs> air into his scrotum. Like, I can tell you... Um, not... No. Of the, of the, of the men that I do know... I can tell you they are not injecting air in that area <laughs> at all. Like the Friends episode when Joey has kidney stones. I mean, it's like, no, no, we're not going up anything. No. no. I, I mean, I don't have any words, honestly. Um, no. I mean, hey, Doc, there's a problem. I mean... Check this out. Was it in tune? I mean, <laughs> I wish I'm we could. Sorry, I that brings a whole. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> that brings whole. <laughs> I'm sorry for anyone listening. I have to. That brings whole new meaning to the term skin flute. Stop it! <laughs> stop it! Stop it! <laughs> So bad, so bad, so bad. <laughs> Bless his little bones. He'd already had surgery, and then they've got to his go do bones. more stuff. <laughs> Kayla! <laughs> well, it's an expression. <laughs> but, I mean, he's already had Takes surgery. on a whole new term now. Uh, I mean... But they've already done surgery there, and he's he's trying to heal, and then then it starts whistling, and they've got to go back. And they're like, "Well, he's like, I didn't I didn't ask for that feature. <laughs> <laughs> this was not in the handbook. Not, this was not in the pamphlet. This I was not a part of it. <laughs> I remember signing those documents for surgery. Whistling this was not was a not part. Of it. A mm-hmm. part. I mean, that. was this an upgrade? I was not aware of all. it. I didn't sign up for it. Um, <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, gosh. Hey, Martha. I can't. Check Martha. No, you know what happened? It wasn't him. Are my hearing aids? It is wasn't. It, is my hearing aids whistling? Is that what it is? I can tell you this. I can tell you this. <laughs> A few things I know in this world. He wasn't the one to notice it. He had to have been asleep, and it was waking her up, and she's like, Damn, the snoring first. Now I got to deal with the whistling? <laughs> this is not, and she had to wake him up, George, and that's how it all started. Mm. He never knew. I can tell you that. She's the one that figured it out. She's like, if I have to take another night. The only nights I got good sleep when you were in that hospital to have that <laughs> surgery. Now you were back home. I am not doing this again. <laughs> I already had to hear about your problems about your prostate. Now I'm not going to hear about you whistling I mean, too. I finally got you to stop get, getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. Finally I got mean, that stopping. Now we got the whistling. She was not having it. Not, mm-mm. We're taking mm-mm. you back. Mm-mm. We did not sign up for this. No, no. Bless it. I can't. So, <laughs> there are your stories for this week. Wow. <laughs> or this month, I suppose. Quite a very uh, lot. You know, kangaroos to whistling. <laughs> Scrotal whistling. <laughs> nice. 
Good variety. Good oh variety. gosh, good I hope you guys enjoyed. I know this isn't like a longer episode, but they're just fun. So and Nessie is real. Nessie, Nessie is real. And I take umbrage, sir. Doctor Sweet, you are not sweet. So we will bring another episode of WTF News to you next month. Next month. Thank you guys, as always, for being amazing patrons yes. that you are. And we'll see you Monday with another new episode. See you soon. We love you guys. Mwah. Goodbye.